Hi. Uh, a few videos back I did, I think it was part three of this uh, POV rotating LED kit build. We got as far as getting the main board completed. We got it mounted there, it's on the motor, and we saw that it does rotate, although it vibrates uh, rather excessively. Um, I, there is actually a single standoff here, which I believe you mount into one of these holes, and that acts as a bit of counterbalance. So hopefully that will stabilise things out when we get to that point. So the next part is this dreaded LED part, and uh, yeah, the LEDs are very, very small. So looking at the information we've got here, they need to be mounted, as I discussed before, right along the edge of the board, like so. So it says the method of soldering the side LEDs, reverse the LED to desk, then hold the side part to solder the LED. I don't know if this is going to be a kind of reflow process or um, a case of uh, actually trying to solder it with the soldering iron. So we're uh, we sort of see where we get with that. I think I'll tackle it first with the soldering iron, but I think my tip might be too uh, big. But uh, I've got some smaller tips if need be. We'll try that. If not, then maybe try putting solder paste along both sides, placing it with the LED on the desk and see if we can uh, heat it up that way and get that to pull in and uh, make a good connection. So if we get one of these tiny LEDs out, without losing the whole lot of them. Okay, so that's one of the LEDs out. So you can see how small this is in comparison with uh, anything else. Um, so we'll zoom in a bit and uh, take a closer look. Okay, so hopefully you can see. So that is the LED there. And uh, yes, it's absolutely tiny. Now it might be hard to make out on the video, um, if you're viewing in HD hopefully you can see it. On the top side of the LED where it uh, will be sort of light emits from, which is, there's basically a green uh, marking on this side. And uh, yeah, there's nothing on the other side. I thought they might have been red, but there's green. And according to the information, green is the uh, ground. So if we sold a green to the negative side, and the other side to the positive side, that should be the uh, correct polarity. Now, of course, we can check this using our multimeter. So I've got the multimeter currently set to the diode range for testing diodes. So if we place our ground where the green is, positive on the other side, there we are, we can get the uh, LEDs to light up, so we know that's a, a good LED. Now, you could, of course, go through and check every single LED as well uh, before you put it on the board. But there are quite a few of them and, well, if you've got one or two that don't work, they can be addressed later. Um, I think it'd be easier rather than necessarily testing each one. I did think initially I might have to test each one to figure out which way around um, you need to put them on, but they have got markings on, so we should be fine. All right, now I've flipped the LED upside down and helpfully there's a little green arrow on it and the arrow points to the negative side. So uh, even better, you don't end up sort of flipping them upside down and then forgetting which way around it is. So this is what I'm kind of thinking, that we sort of place the board on top like that and then try and get the soldering iron in there. The problem is I don't have enough hands to hold the board there and feed some solder onto the uh, joint as well. So I think it would be a case of adding a bit of solder to the pad and uh, then reflowing it onto the LED. So we'll give that a go. Right, so if we go for the first pad here, so it's got a bit of solder on that side, and then I think I'll do a bit on the other side as well. And then if we place this on top, and see if it's possible to hold that there and reflow it. Could be very interesting. And of course I need to try and get this as central as possible and uh, the correct alignment. So that's uh, done that side, see if we can get the other side done. Oh, 
Right, well that's certainly uh, on there. That doesn't seem to be too bad. It's um, it's hard to tell how good that joint actually is, uh, but we can put the multimeter again on the solder blobs and make sure that is actually uh, making a connection through. That's that's worked out okay, but how easy it's going to be to sort of align the rest of them, I don't know. But uh, we give that a go. Right, so I get the multimeter again, set that onto diode. And so we've got positive is this side, negative is this side. Just going to try and uh, somehow get that on the. Uh, I think the negatives are they all common? Are they switching a the positive or the negative? Yeah, they're switching both, so we can't. Uh, we haven't got a common for that. So just try and uh, get that on there. And yeah, that's lighting up fine, so I think that one is uh, is absolutely perfect. So it's just going to be a process now of trying to uh, go through and get all the rest of them on. So we'll uh, do a few and then I'll uh, skip ahead to uh, the completed part. So we want another LED. So there's a few more LEDs, so turn that one upside down. Now it might be possible to do more than one at a time, um, as they are quite close together. But uh, we'll just see. So I need to try and uh, again add some solder to uh, the next pad on uh, both sides. Okay, and then same process as last time, get it on top and then uh, see if we can get the uh, thing to reflow. This certainly is a rather fiddly job. I think this is why um, they always end up wonky when people uh, do this process so touch that on there yeah that's already wonky <laughs> that's uh, inevitable I think with these unfortunately and uh, again can we refer that side yep so yeah you can probably tell there that uh, they're not quite aligned with each other I don't think there's an easy way of aligning them like I say, there was the idea of trying to come up with a jig, and I suppose the jig would have to be a kind of a slotted area that would allow you to uh, place all the LEDs in, keeping them sort of at constant spacing, uh, and then sort of go around one by one, but then it'd be very difficult to get your soldering iron in as well, due to the uh, size of the LEDs. So I'm just going to carry on now and uh, solder the rest of those on, and uh, I'll be back when I've done that. Alright, quick update. Um, I've been battling this now for probably well over half an hour, coming up to an hour, and uh, this is as far as I've got. And yes, they are very wonky. Um, quite a few solder peaks here and there that need to be neatened out. Now, as a side note, I've changed tips to a, uh, a pointy one, cylindrical type tip. Uh, this is easier because it's sort of a, more or less a similar size pitch to the um, LED and uh, still using the same process, but what I've done is I've pre-populated all the pads with some solder. I'm then adding a little bit of solder to the tip of the iron, placing it down like that, getting it tacked on one side. Now what I've found is they don't always um, sort of make a good connection, is when you've got it, when you've got an LED on, you can then literally just place the, the soldering iron on the solder and just drag up lightly across the LED and that just drags the solder across to make a contact then flip it over and drag the other side but obviously you are literally just dragging with very light pressure uh, too much pressure you don't want to be hitting the LED you want to be skimming over the top of it lightly otherwise you'll uh, put it back off again uh, so yeah definitely a small tip is uh, needed otherwise what happens is you start pulling the uh, solder away from the other LEDs and they start dropping off and I've had to sort of go in and uh, manually put another one 
uh, back on in various positions. So yeah, probably another half an hour or so to go and uh, hopefully we'll get the uh, thing completed. Okay, so sometime later and we've actually finally got all the uh, LEDs on. I haven't even counted these, I think there's quite a fair few of them on the board. Um, hopefully they are all connected properly. Uh, unfortunately there's no really easy way of telling until we get it connected up to the main unit and power that on. As you can see, yeah, not perfect. Um, never was going to be really, this sort of thing, it's a very difficult process. But hopefully that will work. So the next stage now is going to be to get it onto the uh, main unit here. So um, you get that in frame. You can see here these are the uh, pads we connect to. Now one side of this is uh, has a longer curve, so the longer curve will go at the top because otherwise you put it at the bottom it's going to uh, hit the thing as it rotates around. As far as I understand, I might just double check that with the uh, thing. Yeah, so it's also got VCC markings on the board apparently. Um, yeah, it does on the bottom side, so yeah, that's correct. So that needs to be slid in that way. And then joined up there, so that's going to be uh, fun. So what I'll do is I'm going to keep using the uh, small tip on the soldering iron. Add a little bit of solder to, I'll go for the end pad here. and uh, it's matching pad on the um, board itself. And hopefully that will sit in there, like so. And try and get those two to join together. Okay, that seems all right. And then we can do on the other side to try and get it to hold in correctly. Yeah, that seems to be holding in. Now I'm kind of wondering if I should power it up with just a few connections on and uh, seeing if it actually does anything. I might just try that before I solder the whole lot on. That will just uh, give us an idea of if the uh, thing's going to work or not. Right, uh, hindsight comes to mind here. I did power it on and uh, that wasn't a good idea at all because it's so uh, out of balance it literally just spun the whole board straight out. Uh, yeah, that would kind of make sense, uh, idiot. So um, yeah, I've actually ripped two of the traces clean off so we'll have to uh, do some repair work on those uh, somehow, a few mod wires, something like that at a later date. So in the meantime I'm just going to get all of these connections soldered and then we'll try it. Okay, so I've got pretty much all the joints soldered now on this LED board. Some of them are missing, namely the ones that I broke the tracks off and uh, just a few others. It's very tricky to get the iron in and I don't think I originally got this seated quite right so it's um, slightly off uh, perfect alignment which makes it harder to drag the solder uh, across the uh, joint there. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, we should obviously get something happen regardless but we're not. Um, yeah, I've been kind of perplexed by this, uh, hence the delay in getting this video up. Um, I can power it on now, right, I've disconnected the motor because we don't want that uh, running at the minute. And the power supply is 12 volts and we're drawing 660 milliamps, so a bit over half an amp. And uh, yeah, nothing on the LEDs at all. Now it had occurred to me that of course We've got a remote control, so we probably need to uh, turn the thing on. The remote control, by the way, is a bit dicky. Sometimes you sort of press on the back um, certain positions and you can sort of see that it is working. Other times it's not. But even with 
having that positioned in a way that I know it's uh, sending the signal, nothing happens. So, interesting. So, with it rotating, nothing happens. The same problem again. Seems to be a continuous issue that nothing happens at all, apart from the fact it draws a lot of current and the diodes on the board get pretty, pretty damn hot. Uh, so these are our four diodes here for rectification and our Zener there and our Zener is absolutely baking hot. So I'm just going to turn that off again now. So I don't know if it's a case that the Zener's the wrong way around. Um, the markings and the way I've got it positioned as far as I understand are correct. So I'm not quite sure if uh, there's something going on there. Um, I could try flipping the Zener around the other way around but more than likely that will just uh, blow the uh, the Zener. So I'm not too sure about doing that one. Um, I've tried probing various areas on the board and uh, there's power there, but of course I've got no reference. I don't know what's supposed to be powered, what isn't, what the sort of voltages should be. It tends to sort of be, you either get 12 or nine volts in most places. So I did sort of think, well, because we got this infrared LED here, is that working? Yes it is. And then we got a receiver LED there, which obviously as I said before is used to detect when the thing uh, rotates so it knows what speed it's rotating at. That seems to be functioning, although power is being supplied um, to uh, the receiving LED. I'm not quite sure if it's supposed to work like that. Um, I'll need to do some research on that. But say with it spinning or not spinning nothing happens whatsoever so I think the next step really is going to be to try and probe the uh, main uh, processing chip here so I need to look up what that part number is find a data sheet for it and get the uh, pin out etc and then I can try and probe uh, different points on it and try and find out if power is going to it and what kind of power is going to it in relation to what it should be so it could be that something's wrong somewhere and it's just basically overpowered this device and blown it completely. Uh, in which case I think well, that's, there's no hope really. Um, you'd have to buy a whole new kit to uh, salvage the parts from. Or it could be something fairly simple um, but not having a uh, sort of proper schematic or um, any kind of data sheet on anything it's quite difficult to uh, try and diagnose exactly what's uh, going on with this. So anyway, stay tuned, there may well be a future update if I finally manage to get this working. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed sort of seeing how to put it together and uh, if you are putting one together, I certainly hope you have much better luck than I've had um, with this one and actually managed to get it working because it is an expensive kit and uh, it'd be a shame not to have it working but we'll have to see how things go um, over the coming weeks. So thanks very much for watching the video, if you like it please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you've not already done so. And I'll see you soon for the next video. Cheers.